A new study finds that sauna therapy may improve skeletal muscle hypertrophy and skeletal muscle development, in addition to also supporting immune system function. We're going to talk about this recently published clinical trial, finding that 10 sauna therapy sessions over the course of three weeks is able to significantly increase heat shock protein 70 levels. We'll talk about what heat shock proteins are and why they're important, not only for just hypertrophy and skeletal muscle development, but also possibly preventing diseases of the brain, such as Parkinson's, dementia, and Alzheimer's. What the study also found is after 10 sauna sessions over the course of three weeks, there were significant changes within the participant's immune system. And I think this is pretty fascinating because it turns out that sauna therapy is not only just a tool to help detoxification, improve feelings of relaxation, possibly support cardiometabolic health, but sauna therapy also has been shown to increase levels of anti-inflammatory immune cytokines such as interleukin-10 as this study found. We're going to break down the details and talk about what these researchers found. And what I think is interesting, the scientists go to conclude towards the end, is sauna therapy can be a tool for people who either don't have access to exercise or don't like to exercise because it helps to mimic or it's an exercise mimetic, meaning that because of the way that sauna improves heart flow and blood flow and circulatory function, by doing so, it mimics the effects of exercise and it might actually enhance the effect and the recovery from exercise as the scientists figured out. So we're gonna dive into this. The title of the paper is The Effect of a Single and Series of Finished Sauna Sessions on the Immune Response and Heat Shock Protein 70 Levels in Trained and Untrained Men. So men were randomized uh, to do a VO2 max test, and based upon their VO2 max test, they were bucketed into the untrained category or the trained category. The thresholds to differentiate or bifurcate training status was having a VO2 max over 50. So majority of the men in the group that were trained had a VO2 max over over 55. That was the median VO2 max. Now, the folks that, and these are young men in their 20s, by the way. Just for context, I'm 41, my VO2 max is 54. I just tested it last week. So these are very fit people. The untrained group, their VO2 max was 40. So they don't regularly exercise habitually for whatever reason. And the scientists wanted to figure out what the differences in immunologic responses, cardiovascular responses, body temperature, as well as heat shock protein responses is there any difference in athletes versus untrained athletes? And it turns out there is, and that's why we're going to dive into this paper because it's quite fascinating. The scientists say, our hypothesis assumed that after the first sauna treatment, there would be an increase in the total number of white blood cells. They looked at lymphocytes, neutrophils, all sorts of natural killer cells, a myriad of different immune cells because previous studies have found that sauna or heat therapy improves phagocytic capacity of a bunch of different immune cells, including natural killer cells, which are important for for the upcoming cold and flu season, but also it it preferentially changed the cytokine response to pivot the immune system into a more anti-inflammatory state, which we're going to get into. It's very fascinating. They go on to say, in the trained subjects, we expected that the number of neutrophils, basophils, and lymphocytes would increase more than in the untrained men. In untrained subjects, we expected greater changes in HSP-70, that is heat shock protein 70 concentration after sauna treatments as a response to heat stress. We assume that in untrained people, the sauna can be a kind of substitute for physical training and its effect would be similar to the effect of physical exertion. Hence, we expect a strong reaction after the first bath and various adaptation processes after the 10th bath. For trained individuals, the thermal stimulus may have a lesser effect on white blood cells as these individuals' organisms are to some extent adapted to similar extrinsic stressors because exercise induces body heat. And so this is in fact what the scientist hypothesized, and this is pretty much what they found. Now, let's quickly review the study protocol illustrated here in figure one. So the sauna sessions were three 15-minute sessions, and between those 15-minute sauna sessions, there was a two-minute gap. Now, they did all 10 of these three 15-minute sessions over the course of three weeks, which is pretty intense. So this was a short-duration study that is relatively robust to ascertain the physiologic response to the heat stimulus. I don't generally suggest people do this intense of a sauna therapy if they've never done this uh, right away. But it's interesting to see how the body responds to such a heat stress over a short period of time, a three-week period of time, which would be sufficient to induce the adaptations. 
And in short, what we saw is increase in natural killer cells and increase in interleukin 10, which is anti-inflammatory, as well as significant increases in heat shock protein levels, even more significant increases in those protein responses in untrained persons, which supports the hypothesis that untrained people may benefit from sauna more so than trained people because this is a exercise mimetic. And it's really important to acknowledge that. Now, that doesn't mean that athletes can't benefit as well. I think it augments exercise uh, wonderfully. And I try to go in the sauna after I exercise. And I think you should too. So before we continue on, friends, I just want to thank this video show sponsor. Our friends over at Bond Charge make one of the lowest EMF sauna blankets on the market. This gets up to 170 degrees. So if you don't go in the sauna, if your gym doesn't have access, to a sauna, or if you live in an apartment or condo or have roommates, you should definitely invest in a sauna blanket. This is the easiest way to get into heat therapy. Again, this blanket is very small, form factor. You don't need a big space for this. It unrolls and it gets really hot really quick. Just 12 minutes is really all I can take. I get super hot in this. I use this all the time, especially after I cold plunge and I don't have time to start up my sauna. It's a wonderful tool that you can do in the convenience of your home and you can travel with the sauna blanket as well. So you can save a go to bondcharge.com forward slash H-I-H on the lowest EMF, hottest sauna blanket on the market. Bond Charge also makes an array of health promoting tools, including their amazing sleep mask. They also make blue light filtering glasses and a bunch of other great tools. So definitely check them out over at bondcharge.com. So let's talk more about this study. The details are incredibly fascinating. I know you're like me, you like these uh, details and the nuances of the science. So let's dive into it. Now, remember, they did 10 sauna sessions. Each session was 15 minutes followed by a two minute gap and then another 15 minute session, two minute break and another 15 minute session. So it was 45 minutes cumulative, but there was a little bit of, there were some breaks in there. But the scientists say after the first and 10th heat baths, a statistically significant decrease in body mass was observed in both studies groups. We care more about body fat, but we'll take a decrease in body mass. It probably wasn't muscle mass. It was probably water weight because it was just three weeks, but it's important to acknowledge that sauna is a great way to sweat. And that's why I recommend people go in the sauna. We are exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals everywhere. Our air, food, water, clothing, there's flame retardants on bedding and couches. This stuff is everywhere. Increasing your sweating response is a great way to detoxify these heavy metals that have endocrine disrupting effects. So that's important. The scientists say a greater difference in body mass was noted after the 10th session compared to the first session in both groups. That makes sense. The more you get used to sweating, the decrease in body mass. You know, they didn't differentiate body fat versus lean body mass, but there was a reduction. I would speculate it's water weight. In response to the sauna baths, no significant differences were found in body weight loss between the two groups, meaning that trained people versus untrained people didn't lose more or less body weight. They go on to say in both study groups, a statistically significant increase in heart rate was found after the first and 10th sauna bath. They say after the last sauna bath, the heart rate value was significantly lower compared to the first sauna bath in the trained group, meaning that trained athletes tended to have a lower heart rate after the sauna session. They acclimated to the heat stress faster, which makes sense because when you exercise, you naturally get hot and you're more acclimated to maintaining homeostasis after that heat related stress. But it goes to prove that sauna therapy is a great tool for your cardiometabolic health, specifically your heart and heart rate and blood volume, which is great. They also said in response to the first sauna bath, a significantly greater increase in heart rate was observed in the untrained group than in the trained group, which offers a nice disclaimer. If you've never gone in a sauna before and you don't exercise and you have cardiovascular risk factors, your heart rate is going to get going a little bit. So give yourself some time. This study would not be... I think ethical if you were to put 70 year old men or women uh, who were untrained and have them do three 15 minute sauna sessions and 10 of those over the course of three weeks, because that would be a significant surge in cardio, cardio metabolic stress for these individuals. So ease into it if you're over the age of 40 and you have cardiovascular risk factors because your heart rate will go up, but over time, your body will become acclimated to this and will, be, will better tolerate this. Um, there was a change in blood volume, which I think is interesting, but we're going to continue on and talk about the immune responses, which are just incredibly fascinating. And when the first you know wave of COVID broke out in March of 2020, I was sharing the science extensively because we have a large dossier of literature 
finding that sauna and heat therapy improves phagocytic capacity of various immune cells, lymphocytes, neutrophils, natural killer cells. What is phagocytic capacity? That is the ability of your immune cells to go seek and destroy pathogens such as a virus, such as a bacteria, possibly a parasite. So it's important to acknowledge that the activity of immune cells are stimulated by heat. It could be the humoral response of the heat, the changes in heart rate or cortisol, adrenaline. It's not really sussed out. The precise mechanisms by way heat improves immunologic surveillance. But suffice it to say, there is a, a characteristic response that's favorable within the immune system after you get hot. So the best time to go in the sauna is the winter. When everyone's sick and there's sniffly people all around you, go in the sauna. It's good for your immune system. So the scientists go on to say that statistically significant changes in the train group were found only in the natural killer cells between results obtained before the first session and after the 10th sauna bath. So it's interesting to find that there were significant differences in the natural killer cells, mostly in the trained athletes, and there were small changes in the untrained group. But I want to focus on these anti-inflammatory cytokines, specifically interleukin-10, which is yellow here in figure A. As you can see, this increases significantly. This is one of the only anti-inflammatory interleukins. We know interleukin-6 is favorable post-exercise and during exercise. It's actually released from skeletal muscle. And so I know that interleukins get characterized into being bad and inflammatory, but it's all in context. And it turns out that sauna therapy might mediate some of the favorable hormetic responses by way of interleukin-6. But it is nice to know that we do see an increase in interleukin-10, which is anti-inflammatory. But let's focus now on the heat shock proteins. These are incredibly fascinating proteins, and uh, I myself have been very interested in this, as well as folks that you may know about, like Dr. Rhonda Patrick. As you can see, this figure two from her paper titled, Sauna Use as a Lifestyle Practice to Extend Health Span. The heat shock proteins, they help to slow muscular atrophy, they help promote longevity, they help degrade protein, aggregated protein products that may help protect against Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's disease. They also help prevent cardiomyopathy, atherosclerosis, and help cardiovascular functioning. There was another recently published paper titled Heat Shock Proteins and Heat Therapy for Type 2 Diabetes Pros and Cons. The scientists go on to say that human studies indicate that heat therapy reduces fasting glycemia, glycated hemoglobin globin, body weight, and adiposity. Animal model studies have indicated that nitric oxide in the increase in heat shock protein 70 expression is involved in the improvements induced by heat therapy on insulin sensitivity, adiposity, inflammation, and vasometricity, uh, meaning affecting blood flow and vasodilation. I would just say, if you struggle with erectile dysfunction, going in the sauna is one of the best things you can do, my friends. It's the best way to improve blood flow. I've noticed changes in my vasculature uh, since building my, my classic finished sauna. And as a scientist go on to say, the traditional finished sauna may support skeletal muscle hypertrophy by stimulating heat shock protein 70. This protein is involved in the structural development of skeletal muscle. It regulates muscle plasticity and acts as a molecular chaperone, helping to refold or remove defective proteins. In this study, the influence of an increase in internal temperature during sauna bathing on the concentration of heat shock protein from HSP 70 family was determined. After bathing in the sauna, a statistically significant increase in the level of heat shock protein 70 was obtained in both studied groups with an increase in the trained group to 1.47 and in the untrained group to 1.61, which is quite fasting. I believe this was, well, they go on to say, right here. After the first sauna bath, the serum concentration of heat shock protein 70 increased by 144% in the trained group and 271% in the untrained group compared to the level obtained before the bath. This highlights the fact that a one-time heat treatment or a heavy burden on the body, it's a hormetic stressor, just like running is, just like fasting is, just like lifting weights is. Uh, it's a favorable hormetic stressor that causes your body to adapt in favorable ways to help to mitigate the disruptions of homeostasis when you go into the sauna again. So I've noticed that I'm able to tolerate much, much higher temperatures compared to when I started sauna bathing back in 2014. So really important stuff. Now, the scientists say it has been shown that a single exposure to heat in a sauna causes changes in the expression of genes encoding heat shock proteins in peripheral blood leukocytes. In the study by Baukama et al., the expression of the gene responsible for heat shock protein 70 was significantly increased after a 15-minute exposure to the sauna, which is just incredible. Okay, 
Now, we talked about the interleukins that is illustrated here. I think this is incredibly fascinating. Again, interleukin 10 is powerfully anti-inflammatory. And essentially, what these scientists have ascertained is trained individuals have a quicker response to the hormetic stress, and they show better adaptations than untrained individuals. But untrained individuals still experience favorable adaptations after just 10 sauna sessions over the course of three weeks. So that's the important thing to understand. A reduction in heart rate, reduction in body mass, uh, changes in blood volume, which could be important for blood viscosity, improvements in anti-inflammatory signaling. And I think what is most significantly, the big takeaway from this study is significant increases in heat shock protein, especially in untrained people. Now, untrained people need that protection for their brain, for their cardiovascular system. So if you just for whatever reason, I implore everyone to exercise, but if you don't like to exercise or you can't make the time for it or you're injured or what have you, uh, at least go in the sauna. Now, if often people follow up with the question, well, when do I sauna? How hot should it be? Well, how long? I suggest when you can do it after exercise. It may improve some of the damage as we just talked about. You know, when you are building muscle, part, part of the hypertrophy response is to create some localized damage. And increasing the heat shock protein expression may help uh, repair some of that damage uh, and cause increases in muscular hypertrophy, which could be important. And you do see the similar shifts that you see in exercise with interleukin-6 elevations. We see that with sauna, which I think is quite fascinating. So I suggest, you know, depending upon your accessibility, at least 15 or 20 minutes after you exercise. And if you can take a break, do a cold shower, do a cold plunge, do a cold swim, and do another 15 minutes, I think that is phenomenal. If you can do that three days a week at a minimum, you are going to do yourself a lot of favors from a cardiometabolic health standpoint, from relaxation, improving blood flow, erectile function, stress reduction, the list goes on and on, my friends. There's a lot of benefits here. So let's get after it. I want to thank these scientists for putting out great research and helping us to better understand the mechanisms as to how sauna therapy and heat therapy can improve human physiology. Incredibly fascinating stuff. Thank you for watching all the way through. Let me know what you think in the comments section. If you enjoy the content, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out our show sponsor, Bond Charge. They have an amazing at-home infrared sauna blanket that is the lowest EMF on the market. Definitely check it out. So we'll catch you on a future video down the road.